So before I start, let's go to Isaiah 61. Let's read this real quick. This is what Jesus said when he was, when he was in uh, uh, Nazareth in front of the, it's not the temple, I think it was a, the guy told me it was a synagogue, it doesn't really matter to me. But Jesus got up and said these words. And if you're, if you're in the middle of a struggle and you can't figure it out, I just ask you to start quoting these two verses and tell me if it doesn't change your life. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. That's not only financially poor, that's mentally poor, physically poor, emotionally poor, any, any way. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Right now, it's the acceptable year of the Lord. If you're looking for the acceptable year of the Lord, it's right now. So, uh, I'm going to talk about Zacchaeus. The Lord dropped this on me. He gives me like a revelation a day, it seems like. I'm like, I, I can't get them all preached. There's no way. I mean, I don't think I preached anything here twice, though. A year and a half? Probably not. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start writing it down. So this will be what, book two? Hey, the Holy Ghost is so smart, isn't it? Now, I've never done this before. But here we go. All right, so who, who, who has not heard the story of Zacchaeus? Who has not heard the song? Have you not heard the story of Zacchaeus? Awesome. Uh, Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up on the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed his way, he looked, as I said, he looked up in the tree and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down. Because we're going to your house today. You guys didn't see that? No. Nobody didn't see that? Yeah, we did. Come on, it's Sunday school. We did. How many Baptists do we have in here? There we go, the Baptist thing. <laughs> and the Lutherans. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get into it tonight. I love it. Don't you, you, know, you, know, you, know, you know what I love? What's that? Is that a double minded song? <laughs> you know what I love, guys? When someone has never heard the story of Zacchaeus, we're in the right place. That's awesome, bro. Love it. Okay, here we go. Luke, Luke, uh, Luke 19. Here we go. Did Jesus, uh, and this is in King James, cool. Did Jesus enter and pass through Jericho? I'm going to read through this first, and then I'm, then I'm going to go back and, and, and cover it. Now, behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but he could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. He was a small man. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. So Jesus is passing through. Actually, where Jesus is going here, when it says he's passing through, he's going to Jerusalem. So this is in Jericho. And he's passing through to Jerusalem. Jesus is about to go through some of the roughest parts of Israel. Because you know the Samaritan, where the Samaritan gets, uh, he gets jumped. It's, it's through that area. It's really, really, really a rough area. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for today. I must stay at your house. <laughs> Here's the key in life. You get Jesus to hang at your house, that's good stuff. So, <laughs> so he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. So this is a really, really strong word here, guys. So we're not going to forget that word. That's a strong word. But when they saw it, they all... Something happened. Hallelujah. <laughs> but when they saw it, Karen, I love you. I'm sorry. I tried to make it a it. little bit bigger. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I just show up. That's it. So when he saw it, they... <laughs> <laughs> Where am I, Scott? Oh. Okay, but when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Mm. Don't you love Christians? <laughs> then Zacchaeus stood and said, Lord, look, I'll give half my goods to the poor, and if I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation, 
I restore fourfold. I think he had. To, I think he had a lot of restoring to do. And Jesus said to him, "Today salvation has come to this house, because he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost." So, so those guys were telling you that he only comes to the crack tents. He goes anywhere if somebody's lost. Yeah. That can be at the bank. That can be at the golf course. That can be at Charlie's store. That can be anywhere. Tattoo parlor can be anywhere. So let's so let's start breaking this down. Okay. So um, let's go back to one. We're gonna go to one and just calm down with it. Okay. So he enters into Jericho and Jesus is passing through. So again, like I said, Jericho. Whenever we I was in Jericho um, in February, and that's not a place that you really want to go to anymore. It's full of mosques. It's it's, it's taken over by uh, by the uh, uh, come on, you guys, help me. What's the term? Muslims. Muslims. Thank you. The name gets me. I lose my stuff. It's taken over by the Muslims. And the day we were there, they were burning tires because they just got out of the mosque and they were excited, so they were burning tires, stopping cars just in case there was Jews or Christians. Just a hassle. And I'm like, uh, are we gonna, we're gonna like head this way, right? Or are we gonna like go? And, and they tell you on these tours that it's safe to go to Israel. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> but I had a great time. And there was a man called by the name of Zacchaeus. I want you to look here. He was the chief tax collector. What's it mean to be chief? Bad guy. Bad guy. He's like a banker gone crazy. He was the chief tax collector, and since he was the tax collector and did things according to the way he wanted to do it, he was, wow. Anybody like this? So I made some, I made some thoughts on this. Some, some things to notice immediately. Jesus is simply passing through. He's going through Jericho on his way to Jerusalem. He is about his father's business. So what's the father's business? Spreading the good word. Spreading the gospel. And what does the enemy? What does the enemy want us to fight? Get caught up on doctrine. Get angry. So that we don't spread the good news. That we'll, we're too busy fighting. You guys want to hear an interesting, uh, interesting name? Do you know what Zacchaeus means? The word for Zacchaeus is pure. Pure. Now, what's interesting about this, I'm sure that he used the talent to become rich because you could be pure evil and you could be pure good, but, but, but it means pure. So he has made himself rich and he's the chief tax collector. He is literally at the top of his game. He's used his skill, his acumen, and his shrewdness. Now, let's look at the next chapter. Anybody have any thoughts on that before we go any further? Because he doesn't do anything halfway. And, I mean, think about it. You don't get to be chief tax collector and rich by just doing things. People out there in the world say half at it. Right. Half, you know, halfway. Right. That's not how you get rich. You go at it full. He's pure. So he does everything pure. He goes at it full blast. He's, he's single-minded. He's single-minded in his sin. And somebody who's single-minded in their sin is going to be single-minded in their faith. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but he could not because of the crowd, because he's of short stature. So he literally cannot see Jesus. Has anybody here gone to Israel? The crowds are so tight. And back then, the way that they did it is they, they were up against each other. I mean, you were, like, you were like right here, close, really close. And the way that those uh, those crowds push in, there'll be five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people deep. And you already remember in Mark 3, Jesus had to go out on the ship. Remember, he had to get off the shore because the crowd was pressing him so hard. So think of this crowd just pressing to that level. It's a hot day, it's sweaty, no one's taking a bath, and he knows how long. I mean, it, it had to be a rough time. He can't see. So he's innovative, he's creative, he's single-minded in everything he does. Okay, let's keep going. Um, so, so he ran 
and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. Now remember, when you're studying the Word of God, two things you don't want to do. You want to get rid of platitudes. You want to get, you know, you know what platitude is? How was your day? How was your breakfast? Uh, how's it going? Fair to middle. What does that even mean? Fair to middle. Fair to middle is like a grade of cotton. I mean, what does anybody today know about a grade of cotton? You know, when you say platitudes, they're buzzwords. Like, remember last week we were talking about, or the, or the week before last? I said, so what does it mean to increase your faith? And everybody starts saying, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I mean, can we kept jumping into that? But what does that mean? How does that work on Monday afternoon or Tuesday afternoon? You know? That's the most important part. Don't, I mean, don't you guys think? If it doesn't work on Tuesday, who cares? If it, if it doesn't work whenever the, whenever the, the air conditioning has gone out on your car, or somebody's cut you off in traffic, or you just got a summons to go to court, or you're in the back of a police car, if it doesn't work then, who cares? Let's go do something else, right? This works all the time. That's the whole point I'm trying to make. It works all the time. Do you know what, you know what Jesus saw? Do you know what Jesus saw in this guy? He likes him. He likes him, man. Guy's got enough guts to get up in a tree. He's not worried about what people think. I mean, do you remember after Jesus died? Do you remember when he walks through the wall? And where are all the disciples? They're hiding in this room because they're afraid of the Jews. And he's like, boys, what are you doing? What are you doing? Well, three months later, the guys that are hiding, he's, he's at the town square getting 3,000 people born again. Remember? He said, you are the ones who crucified Jesus. You're the jerks that did it. He didn't care. That's what I'm saying. When Jesus touches you, when you do crazy things like climb up in a tree, or you do crazy things like get together and let's go start, let's go start a crazy church that's different, and let's go reach this generation, and let's do some, some weird stuff like go from city to city to city and get people born again. Who's doing that? The big guns, but why not us? Now, do you guys know what sycamore means? You might know what sycamore means? You're going to love this one. Sycamore means clarity. In his self-reliance, he climbs up in a sycamore tree. This is where his clarity comes in. A sycamore tree today is the symbol of clarity. The Catholic Church has pendants that they use for clarity. So if someone's making a decision to change their life for God, they're, they're, they're trying to get off drugs or they're trying to do whatever, they'll, they'll put on a sycamore tree. This little pendant that's saying, I see it, I got clarity. It's pretty cool. They got it from this, from this proverb. Interesting thing about it, a sycamore is that it can't survive a frost. It only works well in hot climates. Hot climates, what's a hot climate? Hot climates. Woo! How long was I gone? <laughs> okay. You guys follow? Okay. Any, any, any questions at this point? But at this time, Zacharias deal with his believer. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. But he's taking all of his audacity. Right. He's taking all of his hoops spot. He and he's like, screw these guys. I can't see. I'm going up a tree. I mean, I can see the guy. He's like, I can't. So how about, there's a tree. I'm, I'm going to do it. Zoop. He's up the tree. Makes me think of you, dude. You do something like that. <laughs> yes, you will, wouldn't you? <laughs> Hallelujah. You would dance up the tree. Okay. Where are we here? Uh... He's in the tree. We got him stuck in the tree. You probably better get him down. And when, and, and verse 5. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must go to your house. He promotes Jesus over his own personal wants. He's willing to humble himself enough to where he can see the master. As Jesus comes his way, he's overcome by Jesus. His ability to reach into men's hearts the self-reliance was overmatched here. This is a man way beyond the norms of society. This is a man who will walk 100% obedience to what God has told him. Jesus says, I'm coming to your house. You know, you, know, you know what we're trying to get people to do? Let Jesus come to their house. Now, where is the house? In your heart, right? But where is the house? Now, if you're in the house, do you follow the house rules? 
usually. So Jesus, you know, we have a call to be single-minded. Single-minded to the things that God has told us to do. Because remember, he says, if you don't get this parable, you'll get no other parables. So I don't see any other choice on it. So Jesus came to his house. It's like the time Jesus came to your house. It's different. It's just different. He came to your house, man. <laughs> he came to Charlie's house. He hadn't been in church in 42 years. He came to your house. He came to your house. He came to Hannah's house. Man, this girl here has, has a ministry of getting people who are in, in compromised positions set free. And she knows that. She knows what it's like to be in a compromised position. St. Paul, you have suit. You have the same, the same thing going on. Jesus has come to your house. When are we going to start when are we going to start monitoring who's at our house and worrying about the things that aren't working in our lives? See, I don't see anybody in the next day possible going and getting inner healing. Yeah, I think it needs to be done, but I don't see it. I see everybody in the apostles moving forward into what God said. Paul said this one thing, that sounds single-minded, this one thing I do, I forget what was behind and I press for what's in front. And do you know what it means to press? For you guys who are married, who's married here? Okay, when you first saw your wife, how did you get that phone number? Did you press? Were you, were, were you just gonna let it go? Invited him to chess. What did you do? <laughs> what did you do? Chess. You invited him to chess? Yes. <laughs> I missed the phone call. You missed the phone call. <laughs> were, were you going to miss the first day? No. <laughs> I met the Scott put on all kinds of perfume. Not perfume. After, after shave and everything. I bet you look good. I did the same thing. <laughs> you're, you're getting pressed. You're getting ready. You know what I did? I went to Dick's house, a friend of mine named Dick, and I and I spotted Denise. I saw her up in the uh, up in the balcony, and I said, "Don't let me chicken out." So I went to his house, and I said, "Don't let me chicken out." And I said, "I, I can't leave here until I call her." How many times I picked up the phone and hung up again? Eighteen times until I finally did it because I was pressing. You see what I'm saying? We it's pressing. Okay. At least, she's, at least she's in the second right place. Okay. So Jesus wants to come to his house. So, so as he came, so he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. joyfully. So let me ask you a question. <laughs> Do we pray for people to get them healed? So if we get them healed, it's good, but if we don't get them healed, it's bad. And if we get them delivered, it's good. But if we don't get them delivered, it's bad. It's all about anyway. So why do we do what we're doing? Why do we do what we're doing? To get the person to accept Christ. Okay. Right. Well, what if they don't? Give Jesus an opportunity. Give Jesus an opportunity, right? Plant a seed. Plant a seed. But why are we doing it? Love. Yeah. Love. Okay, love's good. Because if you love me, you keep my commandments. Okay. You want to give it away. You can't, you can't hold it in. Okay, but, but what's the word? Being about your father's business. Ministry of reconciliation. Joy. Joy. About my father's business. I just want to serve it. I want to do whatever he wants me to do. Remember when Jesus crosses over to the other side? There's a storm. I mean, remember, everybody kicks him off the island. Don't come back. Well, then the island's the other side. It's where they've been a long time so now. Don't come back. Have you been kicked out of the whole town? Yep. I mean, you've been kicked out of the whole state. Well, you're qualified to be here. I mean, think about it. He got kicked out of the whole area. Don't come back. And his father told him to go over there. Now, if we're basing it on today's Christianity, was he a failure? Did he miss it? Yes. You can't say hell yeah, church. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just, just put no in front of it. No way we're talking gospel. Um, <laughs> no. 
it's <laughs> Love it. Wanda, Wanda will get me back. <laughs> but we have to get out of the realm of winning and losing. And we have to get back to being. To, 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 remember, I, I give you the, I give you a verse on it. For the joy set before him endured the cross and suffered the shame. How about this one? Count it all. Ooh, that's a tough word. All. You know what all means in Texas? Ain't no more. Count it all joy. Because you know why? You're walking with your father. Remember when you were a kid? Of those of you that had good relationships, remember how you'd be afraid? There'd be a storm or something going on. I remember my uncle. I was in Amarillo. There was, per there was hurricanes. There was tornadoes all over. And I'm like 12 years old, and I'm like looking for the high hill. Because I don't know if you guys know, but the Panhandle of Texas, man, it's like if you miss this tornado, give it 10 minutes, another one's coming through. And he's, you know what he said? He goes, ah, oh, we're, we're okay. There's no tornado going to come through. I was just I was good after that because I because I because he he brought me joy my uncle brought me joy because I wanted to be with my uncle and I believed what he said this is what's going on here we do it for the joy set before us what do you guys think there's got to be some reason we do it you see what this is peace and joy come from surrender yeah. and and I'm tired of having the answers there's something about saying Father I don't know what to do here. I have your word, and I'm trying to understand it, but I need your help. There's something in that. Go read the Acts, and listen to what they said. We're nothing special. Herod gets up. Check out this. This is a crazy story. Herod gets up, and when they say that Herod's a god, he goes, yeah, that's right. He doesn't, he doesn't stop it. And, and what happened to Herod? You guys remember what happened to Herod whenever he did that? Yeah, How did he die? Worms got, like, struck him. And, and worms got him. Yeah. Okay. Three or four chapters later, when they call Paul and Barnabas gods, what did Paul and Barnabas do? They gave glory to God. They started tearing at their clothes, and they ran out and said, we are not gods, okay? People came against them at that point since they weren't going to become gods. One of them said, you're Zeus, and another one said, you were some, I can't remember what the other one was. And so they got stoned and beat for doing that. So that's how important it was to them to honor God. A beating was okay. It was better than dying because you've taken God's glory. So what's happening in the church today, personal opinion, is that, is that a lot of people are taking the glory that belongs to God. That's why we don't have a lot of power in the church today. And part of it is surrender. That's the first part. Submitting, surrender, whatever you want to call it. Okay, verse 7. But when they saw it, what did they see? What did they see? They saw something. Um, yeah. They, how many, how many of them complained? Like five out of ten. Five out of ten. That must be wild. What does that mean? Five out of ten. Yeah. You asked. <laughs> That's half, isn't it? I mean, is that half in, in, in Maryland? Yeah. 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 They all complain, <laughs> saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Hmm. Well, that's religion in its purest form. But how many times do you think Jesus heard that? Enough to where they. Enough to where they. Enough to where they crucify him. Yeah. As Jesus comes this way, he's overcome by Jesus. His ability to reach into men's heart, the self-reliance was overmatched here. This man is way beyond the norm of society. Jesus says the most amazing thing, I'm coming to your house. Jesus wants to come to all of our houses, our hearts. He wants to live in us, not only live in us, but totally change us. Now, let's see what happens to, to Zacchaeus. So, so, so here's the thing. Okay, go back down to Smith, Karen, Karen, just, just a tip. Uh, no, just uh, where you were, just, just a little bit more. All right, there, that's perfect. Okay, so if you look here, when they saw it, they all complained. So this is, what is this? This is drama. Yeah, that's double-minded. That's double-minded, yes. Zacchaeus is making a single-minded statement, I want God at all costs, and the people are angry about it. That's double-minded. You guys see that? They're angry. Okay, now look here. Then Zacchaeus, then pure, 
stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord. Now, this guy doesn't do anything. Now, now here's your five out of ten. He doesn't do anything halfway, though he did it here. I give half of my goods to the poor. Remember, this guy is super rich. I mean, you talk about a conversion. The meanest guy in town becomes the nicest guy in town, just like that, because Jesus came to his house. Guys who were alcoholics for years are no longer alcoholics. I don't even say it, but you know what I'm saying. The guy who, I, I still tell everybody that story about how we couldn't get everybody in that upper room, and you said, hey, we got 30 crackheads, we got 30 crackheads across the street, we probably get in this house. That's what Billy said one day. He said, we got 30 crackheads in that house over there. And if I've taken anything, and the only thing I don't agree with, he should have put in, since I've taken anything from people by false accusations, I restore fourfold. Okay, now let's talk about four for a minute. Zacchaeus gives half of his wealth to the poor and pays back four times what he's taken from the people. Four signifies the creative ability of God. Do you, do you remember the four soils in Mark? Sources of the word. Some falls by the wayside. I mean, he falls on the hardened path. So God says, um, um, you know, he tells us something. For example, have you ever tried to try to minister to somebody? And go, I don't want to hear it. Yeah. No, I don't want to hear it. They're not going to receive, right? The word that God said, the word that you're trying to sow into their life, they're not going to receive. And what does it tell you happens to that seed? The birds come and eat it. The birds are the demons. The birds just take it away. The demons take it away. It's not productive. That's one of the soils. That's soil number one. Soil number two is rocky soil. They hear it for a while, but then their old preconceived ideas kick in, right? This isn't me. I don't do things like this. You know, why am I doing this? And they quit. Soil number three is what? The thorns. The thorns, right. So, so, so God tells us to do something, and in the thorns, we start saying, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust for other things come in and choke the word. This is not how I see things. I don't do things this way. I would rather I, I would rather barbecue than come to church. I would rather do it my way than to, than to you know, I would rather stay angry at that person than, than, than to walk in love towards them. Whatever. We get to the point where deceitfulness, we, we get too busy. Too much goes on. I can't do it. I'm too busy. Then the last soil is the good soil. Where it's your choice to do 30, 60, or 100. Do, do you see what this is saying right here? That fourth soil signifies God's creative ability. The first three soils, 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 you're gonna you're fighting demons all the way in the first three soils. That's where you're struggling with things. That's where you're fighting things. Okay? The last soil is up to you. That one's on you. This is, this is beyond the demonic. This is you deciding how much of Jesus do I want to do? Do I want to go 30? Do I want to go 60? Or do I want to walk the way Jesus did? And I want to walk 100. And Jesus, and Jesus said, as I am, so are you in heaven and this world. Wow. That fourth soil where we finally decide where you finally decide, I'm doing this thing regardless, that's where God's creativity, creative ability comes in. You start partnering with God at that time. Wow, do you guys see that? Woo! This is where God can recreate and, and create in the four. Now, let's get a stick. Okay, I give half to the poor and I will store for full. Okay, now look here. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house. Today salvation came to Wanda. Today salvation came to Scott. Today salvation came to Billy. Came to Charlie. Salvation came to Anita. You see what I'm saying? It came to this house. Me. Because he is also a son of Abraham. So did they have a right to get mad and pissed off? I can only use that one. Because Jesus was talking to a sinner. They're hypocrites. He's as much of a son of Abraham as they are. We're on the same team, boys. He's just not acting well. He's not behaving. 
But Jesus didn't go in there and condemn him. What did Jesus do to him? How did Jesus win? He recognized him and he loved him. Listen, when you're missing, no one needs to tell you. <laughs> no one needs to tell you, right? Is that true? But the minute you decide, what happens? The minute you decide to change, what happens? Nothing can stop you. Do you see, these guys are condemning him, and he's their brother. Is that what it says? Okay, you guys want the secret to loving people? They're 50 bucks, everyone. Go check right now. 50 dollars, right? No. If you want to show your love, there's a way to measure your love towards people. And it's not being nice, and it's not taking meals to them, and it's not giving up your seat. It's not giving them a bribe. It's not, and it's not, it's not patting them on the back. It's none of those things. Though that's part of it. But the way to love people is he says, if you love me, you keep my commandments. So I say, I say, Father, how do I love one? Another? Tell me how to love one. Another. It's been the most interesting thing. In some cases, I've had him say, Don't don't fellowship with this person anymore, because right now what you have, they're not ready to walk there. You know, you know how you try to make certain things work? And it's like, the more you do it, the worse it gets sometimes? I mean, you guys, if you love me, keep my commandments. So I can gauge my love for God by how much I keep my commandments. So what is the thing that's going to keep me continually loving God and keeping his commandments? What, what, what is it? We just said it. Joy. joy, exactly. The joy set before us. I'm going to honor God when it comes to you. I'm going to honor God when it comes to you. So if I love God, and I say I love God, and he says, I want you to go to all these four cities and do this, I have a choice. Done. I can say, no, I don't want to do it. That's just not my cup of tea. Or I can say, you know, that freaks me out. But I know one thing. When you do stuff like that, this thing shows up in a, in a miraculous way. Because the videos that you sent me of those kids on the beach, somebody had to organize that thing to get those kids on the beach. Somebody had to do something. Who reset the building? Did you? Did you have to pray about it? Why, why did you do it? it the Holy Ghost set it up? Yeah. He told me to cancel an appointment that day and go to Douglas. And then I wound up running into Billy. Okay. And Billy's ministered to people. The other day, when I when I went to Douglas, man, I was I was overjoyed to see you, brother. <laughs> now, a guy like Zacchaeus, look at this. Look at verse ten. For the Son of Man, Jesus, has come to seek. How do you seek? I mean, so remember they have a thing called search and rescue. How do they look for people when they really go on a circuit, search and rescue? Helicopters. Helicopters, people on the ground, dogs, dogs Get back there, no everything, right? I mean, okay, so wait a minute. The person lost is poor, so we're not going to send anybody up? No. No. The person lost is rich, so we got to hurry and get them out there, right? No, it's all the same. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. So you, so you want your father's business? Here it is right there. Right there. Whenever he comes to your house, he's going to say to you, I want you to seek and save those who are lost. How's the best way to do that? Love his people. Let's start listening to what the Holy Ghost tells you. Get that seed. Remember he gives you the seed? You know, and, and, and see what's happening is, okay, there's no condemnation, okay? There's therefore no condemnation. I need to worship this generation. Um, we were walking today. I was, I was, I was laughing because uh, we were back on the North 40 and we, and, and we came across, what was that thing we came across? What was that? That was a, like a... Altar of some sort. Altar, a satanic altar. Somebody took pictures of it. <laughs> Karen starts tearing it apart. <laughs> and I was like, wow. You know, it's, it's cool, but to reach this generation, and you know, it's interesting, I learned some things from Billy and Thomas and from Karen. Because remember, whenever you first called me to go minister to these guys, I'm like, I don't have anything in common with them at all. 
So what this generation is looking for is for us, us, to become authentic to who we are. Not to try to relate, but to be them. I mean, to let them be who they are, but, but we're who, who we are. So you, you guys know the story of the prodigal son, right? And you guys call it, you don't enable. But when the prodigal son is, the, the older brother is just as much at fault as the younger brother was, because he's got everything. He would have thrown a party at any time, but he's too busy in religion. He's saying, this guy's a sinner, man. What are you doing hanging with him? That's, that's what the older brother said. The younger brother is like, man, I'm going to go party, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to go sit my wild oats. If you notice the father, the father stayed foot. He didn't go to the pig pen and try to pull the boy out, did he? Because the boy doesn't need him there. Where does the boy need the father? At home. What's that? Where he is. Yes, where he is. Because that's the Holy Ghost job to pull the boy out of the picture. So we, in our zeal, yes, is that word zeal, blessing, whatever. We, the reason a lot of things don't happen is that we try to take the Holy Ghost out. Of we do. Yeah. The hardest thing for me is to be is to be to stop speaking and listen. As a parent, that's been the hardest thing with, with you know my son. So the Holy Ghost tells us, you know, because those guys know where they are. And here's the problem: if, if if we continue to play the part of the Holy Ghost, we smell like a pig. We're covered in mud, and he wants to hear us now. That's religion. You see that? And you remember David when he was going to go fight Goliath? Did not put on Saul's armor because that was religion too. David could have never done what he was going to do wearing all that armor. He had to be authentic to who he was. Tell me another story similar to this where he didn't humble himself. There's a story Jesus tells similar to this where the man did not humble himself. Rich young ruler. Rich young ruler. Remember the rich young ruler comes? Comes to Jesus? Jesus says, he has to tell him, give all that you have. What is Zacchaeus saying? I'm going to give all that I have. And then he says, he goes away sorrowful because he had great wealth. So you got the same position. Just the difference in the heart. Just the difference in the place of the heart. And I think the rich young ruler wanted to come to Jesus. I think he did because he came to him, right? But I, I, I don't think he understood the concept of sonship. I don't think he understood the concept of joy because he saw it as drudgery. He didn't see it as peace and joy, did he? I mean, what do you guys think? Two similar stories. Two totally different out, outputs. Hey, thanks for watching today. Uh, enjoyed the time with you. Uh, if you need prayer or if you need uh, somebody to stand with you in agreement, uh, give us a call or come to hisoutpouring.com or you can send an email to brad at hisoutpouring.com. So every Saturday at 6.30, go to hisoutpouring.com. You'll see a link to the service where you can tie in with us. Uh, you, can, you can come to see us here in Wyoming. We meet every Saturday at six o'clock. You're more than welcome to join us. So have a great week and we'll see you next week.